and welcome to this Training and Coaching with WKO Educational Series presentation. Today's presentation is Lesson 1, the Power Duration Curve Testing Protocols. Before we jump into the session, let's talk about why we want to maintain or establish our Power Duration Curve model. In WKO4, we introduce the idea of human performance modeling, and that model name is the Power Duration Curve. And the power duration curve was established for a reason. The reason most people seem to assume was to predict power at various durations, meaning if I just go hard for eight minutes, I have an excellent prediction of how hard I'm gonna go for 60 minutes. That is not why we did it and is incorrect. What we really wanted to do was to be able to produce a model that did estimate power at various durations, but gave us understanding of the underlying physiology that drove that performance. So when you look at the power duration model, why it's unique, the parameters of the model are real physiological things, not a power number, meaning they're looking at your, when I say physiological, it might be better to say metabolic or muscular metabolic. And it's literally helping us understand how you produce that power. Um, the physiological parameters of the model are derived. You don't need any formal testing, meaning it's basically modeled off of your power data. You don't need to go in a lab and strap on a mask or take a blood test. You simply can utilize your data to get an excellent estimate of these underlying physiological things. As I said before, these physiological things can help us quantify the measurement of the energy systems we're tracking. So think about if you're thinking about your Pmax, it, it helps us measure your ATP. If you think about your anaerobic power, it's your functional reserve power. If you think about your aerobic power, it's your functional threshold power. Think about your aerobic endurance, you're talking about your time to exhaustion, and we also can measure stamina within the system. Now, if we think about it, we actually have a more broad 360 view being produced by the model. At the core of it all is your phenotype, what is your rider type, and then you have power duration metrics of Pmax, FRC, MFTP, stamina, and TTE. There is an educational series on these. If you look at the wk5.com quick start guide, look under the power duration education, and there's a whole series of what these are. But we also can derive modeled FTP, modeled fiber type. We have an enhanced power profile. So now you can look at your second by second performance against others. And we even produce elevation corrected power, how your body you know, would react to your elevation. Why did we do all that? Well, really it's part of the evolution of training with WKO. We really wanted an accurate human performance model so we could evolve training from kind of random to generalize. We've been stuck in generalized training using generalized training zones, using um, generalized information for a while. WKO4 really began the movement towards individualized training and WKO5 continues to enhance it by helping you establish your individual training and response footprint. Really training that's, that's been determined by your unique physiology, that physiological needs that you might have, and then where you wanna go. So that's why we take this 360 degree view. We're producing all these model-based metrics to understand the underlying needs and effect. So if you think about what that footprint is doing and how it helps us individualize, it gives us the ability to quantify and view the underlying physiology of the athlete, which we already talked about, but that really helps us then identify specific relative strengths and weaknesses, or as you're gonna see in the next lesson, a needs analysis of the athlete. And then specifically, it allows us to do a much better job of tracking the dose and response a, a coach or a self-coach athlete prescribes training. The athlete goes through that training and some response occurs. But now we can look at that response not only as power or heart rate data, but the actual adaptation of the underlying physiology. That allows us to understand the effect of training formats and modality on the athlete much better. Now to establish the model, we need to feed it, right? So one of the things is it's not a magic model. It doesn't know or guess what you could do in the future. It needs a certain amount of information within it to make it work. 
first of all, you need an accurate range of performance data. If you have bad data with data spikes and bad files, you're going to get garbage in and garbage out. So it's important that you're keeping your data clean and accurate. Second, you need at least 30 days of such data, preferably 90. So if you only have 30 days of data, your model's going to be okay. Like you just started with training with data and you only have 30 days, it'll be okay. But you really want to get at least 90 days of data into the system to really, really be, wow, this is a good model. And in that data, you need some maximal efforts. And there's a lot of confusion on that. If you never go hard, or maybe all winter long, you're just sitting at the trainer doing, you know, the hardest work you're doing is some form of sweet spot or below threshold, the model doesn't know how hard you can go. It's not gonna predict that. It just knows what you're doing. So you need occasional max efforts in a short, medium, and long range, which I'm gonna explain over the next series of protocols and how to achieve them. When we look at testing formats for WKO, um, basically I break them down into structured and unstructured formats. This is my system and my opinions of how it works best for WKO, but you can actually, and one of the things I encourage, as you saw in the introduction to this series, I want you to form your own opinion and what works for you. There's excellent information about their other formats. For me, I break it up into a structured format, which I'll use in an annual startup. So I don't do a lot of structured testing, but each year, each season, right, I want to start that off with an annual good, clean, structured test. If for some reason an athlete has taken an extended period off, again, I want to start that retraining with a, uh, a good structured test. And if for some reason the athlete, we just need a good, clean start. I'll do a structured test. It often allows us to just focus, get our testing done and move on. But the reality is probably 80% of my testing, 90% of my testing is simply unstructured. And that just is an ongoing maintenance. So I'm gonna take you through both these formats and give you my protocols now so that you can utilize them or some version of them to improve your own testing. Let's start out with that initial structured testing. So one of the things that you notice in the model the model requires maximal data. So one of the things is we're gonna do a classic test that you know really goes all the way back to the original training and racing with a power meter. Um, that the testing protocols in there were a good solid basis. Of course, now we can go much deeper. We have the information of the model, but that still is a really good basis of the training. The difference here though is when you're maintaining your power duration model is you want each test to be maximal. So we spread it out over time. So basically day one is a warm up, and I don't prescribe the warm up. Each athlete needs to get warmed up at their own level, but it's a warm up, and then a all out maximum five minute test, then roll around for an easy 30 to 45 minutes, just shake it all off, cool down, and head home. Day two, again, your warm up. Now we want a max 20 to 30 minute test based on your phenotype. If you've just started using WKO, just think about the type of rider you are and this will make sense. So TTers need 20 minute test, an all around or a sprinter, maybe 25, and a pursuiter more 30 minutes. So if you're a pure TTer, you can go shorter. If you're a pure sprinter, you actually go in the middle and a pursuiter, somebody with a lot of anaerobic capability, they actually want to go a little longer in that testing. Why? Well, you're as you establish the model, one of the things that we're doing by creating FRC and FTP is separating. Your FTP is your maximal aerobic steady state or your maximal lactate steady state. They relate to that. They're not exactly that. Um, so the reality is we want to burn off the anaerobic capability so that it's not over reflected in the model. So depending on your phenotype, you're doing a longer test, 20 to 30 minutes, roll around easy for 20 minutes at low endurance, cool down and you're good. Day three, um, good warm up, and then a max one minute test. Always the painful one in my book. <laughs> um, then an easy five, 45 minutes again in endurance. Day four is a recovery day. Now, just as a note, when certain athletes, depending on your overall fitness, like if you're pretty unfit, you haven't been training, you could flip day three and four to make sure you get a little rest before the final two tests. So that's a protocol that sometimes I'll adjust there. I can flip three and four. And then day five is a simple, good warm up and then two times 150 meter max sprints, just short, 
super hard, super fast. Spin around for 45 minutes, cool down. Now the reality is once you get through these five days, your model will be very clean and it'll be very uh, uh, tight. I'm gonna show you what that means in a moment. And again, I just do my structure testing at startup or you know after extended breaks. Once I've established the structured testing, I go to unstructured testing. And because it's unstructured, it's a little bit hard to explain, but basically we're using normalized residuals and testing targets. I'm gonna show you this in a moment in a screen. And we're taking that, and actually WK5 will specifically tell you what the short, medium, and long targets are. And I just blend those into training during a 30 to 90 day period. Um, meaning I know my short target, my medium target, my long, I'm going to visually demo this in a second. And I just blend that in. But when I do blend them in, I do my short, medium, long test in the same like two to three weeks. I mean, I don't do the short test 30 days in the medium test, uh, 50 days in or 60 days in, and then the long test 90 days in. I put all the testing in the same two to three weeks period. But what I do and why I call it unstructured is I blend them into a workout. So I might make the first effort of a workout a max short effort or a max medium effort or long effort, whatever we're doing, and then just progress through the workout. Um, a single test here and there is not too fatiguing for an athlete. And it allows you to maintain the model without formally interrupting training and saying we need multiple days of testing. You're just blending it in there. Therefore, you're tracking a model threshold and all of the metrics that come out of that. So if you look at WKO5, I'm going to use my pointer here. There is in all the advanced and basic WKO5 views, which you can see up here, there is a power duration model for cycling or running if you're so following this. And if you scroll down to the bottom, this is a normalized residual chart. If you look at here, the straight red line, imagine that's your power duration curve. They power at every second, right, over time. You have time happening here. What the blue dots are measuring, if this is the estimated curve, is where your actual mean max power is over or under the curve. Right, so over, under, over, under. And what the best process to test in a short, medium, long is you wanna look at the three key points that are under. And that would be your, you see the way I laid it out here, your short, medium, and long. But an easy way to do it is if you look down here is we have broken it out and you could just see your target time. And I know this is pretty small, but there's actually a target power which you wanna to attempt to exceed. So target time of the short is 30 seconds, medium is 133, and long is 27 minutes for Joe Ryder here. So we actually lay that out for you, and it's ongoing. So every time you test your model, the model will update, you'll get a new short, medium, long target. So if you think about in structure testing, if you're just doing it every 30 to 90 days, your model is very tight. And all you're doing here is pulling the model up. It's like a structure, you know, bridge. You're just shoring up the points that it's under. And more and more as you do that, these residual lines will get closer and closer to your actual power duration model. You can visually, a couple of ways to check, like, wow, am I doing it right? First, just start by looking at your power duration model. The red line here is the PD curve and the yellow is your actual peak mean maximal powers. And you notice here, there's a little bit of oddity here, but really you can just visually see this is a pretty close fit. Now to the mathematicians, the fit is gonna be something more specific, but the reality is I'm just saying visually, you can see that this is a pretty good fit. And there's a couple of points. Here was that short, you see where mean max power is under. Here's the medium and here's the long. So you could visually identify them before your test. And as you test, you're gonna make this fit tighter and tighter and tighter. Now, in this same dashboard, I should have said that the dashboard is PD, um, is your power duration model cycling. So all this is in the same dashboard. You can actually see your PD curve chart with error calculations. We actually give you the math to check the quality of your model. And long story short, you can see the plus minus on how many watts it might be off and the percentage that your metrics, your key metrics of Pmax, FRC, and FTP are. So this athlete is off maybe as much as 2%, here 1.4% at FRC and 1.1% at threshold. 
So we actually give you the ability to error check your model and see if it looks pretty good. Now, if you want to understand how you're making that power in some of the points of anaerobic and aerobic contribution in that same chart pack is anaerobic or aerobic and anaerobic contribution of power data. And the blue is your anaerobic power, so it declines pretty quickly. The green is your aerobic power and it upticks as you go. And then you can see the model in red, which is the combination of the two. And for this athlete at about 26 minutes, they're still making 12 watts anaerobically. So this athlete's got a little bit of a, a, a better FRC. So they're around 19, so that's pretty solid. So it just gives you some insight into your power duration curve, how it breaks down by energy systems. That completes lesson one. Next, lesson two, using WKO to better understand your strengths and limiters. Basically, now that we've established your power duration curve, I'm going to walk you through the ability to diagnose the athlete or you if you're self-coach, diagnose your needs.